Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Friday, October 12th, 2012. I'm James Burns going over last night's sitcom that was on all the channels. Well, most of the channels. I'm talking, of course, about the vice presidential debate between Vice President Joe Biden and, of course, the uh, GOP vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan. They went over a number of issues, foreign and domestic. The moderator was Martha Raddatz. They first jumped into uh, Libya regarding the attacks a couple weeks ago on the 11th anniversary of 9/11, and uh, you know I've got a couple of things that uh, both candidates said, and I got as you can tell probably I got a couple notes here, so let's get into it. Biden said a bunch of malarkey regarding uh, whatever he was talking about. Uh, there's a lot of bumbling, a lot of stumbling, and you know he repeated himself a lot of times. And uh, talked about the Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Al Qaeda, American values, sanctions on Iran. Uh, then uh, Biden says something about it being a bunch of stuff. And uh, here was a quote I actually agreed with Biden on: "Quote unquote, war should be the absolute last resort." Then they moved into the economy. They traded barbs really heavily when it came to unemployment and jobs. Paul Ryan said that "quote unquote Mitt Romney's a car guy." <laughs> No, that was his dad. It's just another example how Mitt Romney wants to be exactly like his father. Uh, we talked about it on the uh, review of uh, PBS's uh, Frontline special, The Choice 2012. You you want to go listen to it, going through their backstories between Romney and Obama. But going back to the vice presidential debate, to this laugh fest, I honestly thought they brought back whose line is it anyways. So as the night progressed, they continued to trade jabs at one another. And Ryan said this, sometimes the words don't come out of your mouth the right way. Of course, he was referring to uh, his opponent, Vice President Joe Biden. And then, of course, Biden. Biden came back and he called out the uh, GOP, the grand old party, for putting the wars in a prescription on the credit card. He said that a number of times. Then they moved into Medicare and entitlements. And, uh, of course, they used a lot of cliches, like this one that Ryan used regarding the Democrats. They got caught with their hands in the cookie jar. And they got on a whole bunch of math questions and facts and figures and whatnot. One thing that happened over and over again that really made Biden look bad, in my opinion, was he kept interrupting Ryan when Ryan was talking. Now, Ryan did this a couple times as well, but he was a lot more respectful about allowing Biden to have his time. And, of course, uh, Ryan had his own catchphrase. He said, look, about a bazillion times. He was like, look, look, look. And, of course, I invented a new drinking game. I put it up on uh, Facebook. I was uh, throwing out some Facebook comments throughout the entire ordeal. And, yeah, new drinking game. Every time Ryan says, look, take a drink, shot, or a swig. And, of course, a friend of mine said also you could do a, a bong rip if that's your sort of thing. If that's your bag, baby. Then they went into tax cuts. The barb fest continued back and forth, back and forth. They went on to defense spending, and Ryan talked about peace through strength. And they got into Afghanistan a bit more. They did so a little bit at the beginning. And there was a lot of inconsistencies regarding Afghanistan. And Ben Swan, of course, who does a reality check, I was following him on Facebook and several other people who were leaving comments throughout the debate. And he was citing out a lot of facts not just regarding Afghanistan, but a lot of other issues as well. But specifically, we'll talk about Afghanistan. A lot of BS coming out from both sides of the two-party puppet show. BS coming out of Biden's mouth, and the same goes for Ryan. Martha Raddatz, the moderator, who, in my opinion, did a very, very bad job in uh, uh, just like last week with Jim Lear, the only excuse is Jim Lear is, what, 300 years old now. So you got to give the guy a break. But she was terrible. She basically let Biden walk all over Ryan and interrupt him every chance he got. And I would say she gave Biden more time. And what's funny is, before we go into the Afghanistan discussion, debate, whatever, 
<laughs> there were moments in the debate where Biden was actually debating her. And I was just wondering, uh, Biden, uh, since when did you start debating uh, the moderator? What, is she also a vice presidential candidate? <laughs> so back to Afghanistan. She mentioned uh, the 2,000 deaths of American soldiers the fact that we've been having a growing number of blue on green attacks, or was it, no, it's green on blue attacks, my bad, green on blue attacks, that, that means Afghan soldiers, Afghan police that have killed NATO, U.S., West troops, whatever you want to call them. The point is, you had Biden downplaying this, and I just don't really understand this whole thing, this whole warmongering from both sides, and this is one issue where you obviously see the truth, that there is no real difference between this two-party puppet show. What you saw during the vice presidential debate was nothing more than a prime example of what I would call WWE wrestling, our very lousy fixed tennis match. Anyways, so Ryan said this regarding uh, Afghanistan and, of course, the 2014 timeline. They talked a lot about that. This is what Ryan said, quote-unquote, "'We don't want to lose the gains that we've gotten.'" Okay, Ron, what kind of gains are we talking about? The uh, poppy and marijuana fields that our troops are now guarding? Or all the raw materials that we're now raiding and mining and pillaging out of that country? Which gains are we <laughs> discussing here? I wouldn't call the deaths of 2,000 soldiers gains. I wouldn't call the uh, injuries bestowed upon thousands of more of our men and women that have served over there as gains. I wouldn't call the uh, number of suicides, because that number continues to climb up. Of course, that doesn't count amongst the uh, 2,000 dead. I wouldn't count exactly the uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome that a lot of our men and women in uniform are going through from serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. Those are not exactly gains, in my humble opinion. A couple of the comments that Ben Swan left up on his Facebook page, and if you want to go check them out for yourself, it's uh, Ben Swan's Reality Check, facebook.com slash Ben Swan Reality Check. And he is one of the best reporters out there, bar none. An actual reporter, an investigative journalist, who actually goes and does what you would expect most reporters to do, not just read what's off the AP wire. So he said a lot of good things about the reality of the situation regarding Afghanistan. He called out uh, Raditz, who knows for a fact that, you know, a lot of the stuff that they're talking about, both Biden and Ryan, is BS, lies. She knows this. She knows the fact that we're going to be in Afghanistan until 2024. She knows that we're going to keep 25,000 troops in Afghanistan until that time. She knows that, but she did not mention it during that portion of the debate. And like I said, if you want to go read some of the other uh, really smart comments and fact-checking done by the one and only Ben Swan, go up to facebook.com slash Ben Swan Reality Check. And moving on from Afghanistan, uh, they continue to uh, have this uh, sparring back and forth, Biden versus Ryan. And like I mentioned a moment ago, sometimes Biden was even taking on the moderator, even though it seemed like the moderator was kind of leaning a little bit in favor of him as opposed to Ryan. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I would like for the moderator to be in the middle, keeping it even Steven and not allowing them to uh, do what happened last night because it seemed very childish for Biden to continue to interrupt Ryan. And unfortunately, Ryan also got involved in that too, but not as badly. So I'll give Ryan a little bit of credit there. They moved on into the uh, Syrian civil war. And my issue here is, why are we meddling in civil wars? Why did we get involved in the Libyan civil war? Why are we getting involved in the Syrian civil war? Yes, Assad is a bad guy. There's worse guys out there than Assad. But at the same time, the Al-Qaeda-backed rebels are also bad guys. There's no lesser evil here. We should just leave them the hell alone. If we had a civil war here, would we want any other country to interfere? Would we want China or Russia to interfere in what was going on here, an internal matter? No, of course not. It's a civil war. We should stay out of it. Then, of course, they moved off to their religious views, and they both happen to be Catholic, Ryan and Biden, and they talked about abortion. And, of course, they're both very sensitive about the subject. But the truth is, as a former Catholic, somebody who was raised Catholic, I did a first confession, first communion, confirmation, the whole thing, before I left the church. I know for a fact that the doctrines of Catholicism is the belief in the sanctity of life. 
and it's very hypocritical of any candidate to claim otherwise. Now, personally, I'm all about states' rights. It should be a states' rights issue. If one state wants abortion legal, then it should be legal there. If one state votes it to be pro-life, fine. That's the way it should be. But unfortunately, you once again have the government overreaching its authority, as it's been doing for far too long now, and trying to tell everybody what they have to do, right or wrong. Now, my opinion is irrelevant, because we're talking about the debates here. So let's get back into that before I go off on a tangent. Now, of course, you had Ryan, who came off as the big-time pro-lifer, and you would say, if you were a Catholic watching this, you would say that Paul Ryan best represents the Catholic Church on this issue, but Biden did say something interesting. He talked about how he accepted the Church's doctrine on, you know, that issue, but at the same time, he refuses to impose it upon others. Now, that does seem kind of like a libertarian point of view on the subject, but at the same time, I kind of have a problem with... Uh, the federal government funding abortion clinics. Now, if they want to do it privately or through charity without it costing a dime out of the taxpayer's pocket, then so be it. But anyways, let's uh, move on because, uh, well, like I said, this isn't about me. This is about the debate or the, the show that we saw Thursday night. They moved in and touched a little bit on the Supreme Court issue. They both did a little bit of fear mongering. Like, if you let them stay in power, we're going to get bad Supreme Court justices. And if you let the other guy stay in power, same thing. So, you lose either way. And then they addressed some uh, negative campaign ads. Uh, some soldier that uh, Martha brought up. Uh, well, he wasn't there, but it was someone she talked to, allegedly, who was a decorated soldier who was dismayed at the uh, current presidential campaign from all the negative ads. And you know something? I agree with that soldier, 100%. I'm dismayed with the whole system. I'm dismayed with both parties, and we'll get into that in a moment. And, of course, um, Biden whined about hoping to get equal time. Biden, you had more than equal time, buddy. <laughs> oh, I guess uh, he didn't get uh, enough equal time. Anyways, they went into their personal characters, talked about how they're the best choice to be vice president. They had their closing statements. And I got to say something here. I don't really have a dog in the fight, but at the end of the night, Biden did seem a lot more worn out, a lot more tired. Now I realize he's pushing 70, and Ryan's, you know, big old, you know, in shape, health nut, working out. You know, had the energy, had the stamina, but at the same time, Biden did look a little, well, fatigued by the time the debate was over. Now, the big question you're all asking me, well, six or seven of you, who won the debate, James? In your honest opinion, who won? The problem with debates, and this is something, if you've been listening to me, understand this reality. When it comes to a debate, it's not about who I believe won. It's about who you believe one. Unlike football or basketball or baseball, hockey, etc., at the end there is no score. It's a matter of opinion. If you went into the debate being a Biden supporter, you believed Biden won. On the flip side, if you went into the debate as a Ryan supporter, you believe Ryan won. So I saw a lot of this on Facebook and Twitter while I was watching the debate and even right now as I'm doing the podcast. There's a lot of people that were Ryan supporters talking about how Ryan did a great job and then vice versa with the uh, Biden supporters. But of course, fortunately, I have a lot of great people, most of you, who get it, who look past the two-party puppet show and see it as nothing more than a joke, a farce, a charade. For one thing, there were only two presidential candidates up at the debate, two vice presidential candidates, Biden and Ryan. I got news for you. There are more than two vice presidential candidates in the run. There are more than two parties in the run for election day. I know the mainstream media, they want you to believe that you only have two choices. The Commission on Presidential Debates, which is ran by both the Republicans and Democrats, wants you to think the same thing. But there are other vice presidential candidates. Like, for example, Judge Jim Gray of the Libertarian Party, he was doing some online commentary throughout uh, the night on Google. And I'm sure the other vice presidential candidates will probably have a say as well about what transpired. The point is, this is another prime example, just like in last week's presidential debate, where we're not getting a real choice. 
we're, we're being denied that opportunity. Now, not you and me, because we're actually paying attention because we go and do our homework and our research and go and look at all the candidates running and we pick the best person for the job. No, I'm talking about everyone out there who doesn't have that opportunity or doesn't allow themselves that opportunity well, for whatever reason. You know, they got a busy life, they got family, they got job, other things going on, so they don't have time to go and look up uh, this candidate or that candidate. Or they're so used to listening to their favorite network or their favorite talk show host telling them why they should vote for candidate A or candidate B. With no mention of candidates C, D, and the other guys. We should not be under the control of two parties. Because when one party gets into power, they screw us over. The other party comes in, acting like our saviors, we elect them to office, and guess what happens? They screw us over. It's just an endless, tiresome cycle that needs to stop. And that's one reason why I cannot support Biden, and I cannot support Ryan. I cannot support Obama, and I cannot support Romney, because I see them as one of the same. All four of these clowns. They're part of the same problem, the two-party puppet show. So that's all it was for me when I was watching the debate, the vice presidential debate hosted you know, across the nation on several networks, all corporate control, by the way. It was nothing more than a comedy bit. It might as well have been whose line is it anyways. It might have, might as well have been a cheesy, sleazy reality show. Because there was nothing of sustenance there. They didn't talk about this growing police state. They didn't address the concerns of the people about drones that are going to be flying overhead. Or what the TSA has been doing to our citizens, to men, women, and children. They're not going to talk about this endless drug war that's been ravaging both the U.S. and Mexico and other countries. Thousands of people slaughtered. They didn't talk about Fast and Furious, which has sent a whole bunch of guns into Mexico. Who did that, by the way? Was it your local gun shop? Was it these gun shows? Was it Second Amendment advocates? No. It was the federal government. It was the DOJ. It was the ATF that took automatic weapons and shipped them across the border. They're the ones responsible for arming the cartels. They're the ones responsible for training Zeta. Go look it up. It was even on the History Channel a while back. Uh, an episode of Gangland. The government is responsible for this BS. Why did they not talk about this war? The war on drugs. Why did not, they not address that? It's cost us trillions of dollars. We have millions of nonviolent drug offenders sitting behind bars. Who knows how many more have died behind bars. And for what? Because the federal government will not allow you to put a certain substance in your body, whether it's marijuana, cocaine, heroin, etc. Yeah, you know, we had a similar problem back during alcohol prohibition. The government decided it was going to try and tell the people what to do with their lives. But the difference is, back then, they actually passed a constitutional amendment to bring about prohibition. They didn't do that this time. And for the past 40 years, we've had a terrible, devastating war on drugs. Of course, that was not mentioned by either candidate. And of course, maybe that's the gains that Ryan was talking about, the poppy fields and marijuana fields that our troops are forced to protect and guard. Meanwhile, they'll arrest you for that crap. Coming up next Tuesday is the second presidential debate between the two clowns, Obama and Romney. More fun in the sun or whatever. It's going to be a town hall style debate. Should be interesting. But if you want to check out a real debate, not controlled by the two-party puppet show, not controlled by the CPD, the Commission on Presidential Debates, be sure and log on to this site. Go check it out for yourselves. Freeandequal.org. That is freeandequal.org. That is going to be happening in a couple weeks from now. Uh, the day after the third and final presidential debate, it's going to be four third-party candidates from the Constitution Party, Libertarian Party, the Green Party, and the Justice Party. And it's going to be online, but it's excellent. It's an opportunity for you to see some other options besides Obama and Romney. So go check it out, freeandequal.org, freeandequal.org. Just remember, you don't have to play this game. You don't have to vote for Romney or Obama. There are other options that are going to be on the ballot on Election Day. 
And if you don't like any of the candidates, we'll stay home. No to 2012. It's that easy. I got a t-shirt if you want one up at freedomfiles.us in the merch section. And that's what we got to do. We got to start focusing on getting real patriots, real Americans elected to office, real people that are going to actually follow the Constitution and Bill of Rights and be bona fide public servants. And the best way, in my opinion, to do that is to move away from the two-party puppet show and start voting for independent candidates or third-party candidates. And eventually, if we start doing that at the local, state, and even the federal elections with uh, you know the House and the Senate, sooner or later, we're actually going to start putting the two-party puppet show out of business.